are you an introvert or an extrovert? If you're an introvert, you're going to have to be continuously monitoring your social energy levels, which can be a challenge if you don't know how to pay attention better. In this video, I'm going to be going over just a few strategies that you can use to better manage your social energy levels today. Let's get into it. When it comes to all of the things that I discuss in this channel, you need to basically go and figure these things out for yourself. I don't have any silver bullets for you. So when it comes to managing your energy levels, you need to take some of the skills that I'm about to give you and you need to iterate on them and find a tailor-made solution that works best for you that has sustainability and you can manage over the long term. While there's no silver bullets, there are some strategies you can use to try to have a better pulse on your social energy as well as how to figure out what method works best for you in terms of decompressing if it's truly being in a solitary environment or finding something that really helps you recharge. Going through engineering school, I definitely was a hardcore introvert. Now, I probably lean towards extrovert, so I probably consider myself an ambivert. So I definitely can empathize with both sides of the fence here. But when it comes to people that are very introverted, the best thing I could say off the rip is to consider scheduling things when there's less people around. So let's just say you wanna to go to the grocery store. Why don't you go to the grocery store either right when it opens or right before it closes? I would probably say becoming a morning person is something I see a lot of introverts around me doing because you can go get a lot of things done and there's really no people around. You get to knock two birds out with one stone because you are going and getting your thing done and you don't have to fight any crowds and it doesn't really take much social energy to do that. So just going to the store right when it opens or scheduling the appointment right the, the first time slot. These are super easy ways that you can kind of stay away from the crowds while also not taxing your social energy too much. Scheduling things first thing in the morning really helps me when I'm feeling I have a bit of a low social energy. Does it help you? You should leave me a comment if this scheduling strategy helps you or if any of these other strategies resonate with you. Another very important thing is to not compare yourself to others. You shouldn't be doing this at any time, but definitely if you're an introvert, you should not be looking at an extrovert who gets recharged from social situations and you know asking, wow, how does this person do this all the time? This would be so draining for me. Nope, everyone is different. And you just need to have some self-awareness about how you operate. If you're an introvert, you shouldn't be looking at your super extroverted friends and trying to emulate them. You need to forge your own path. So you're not on the extrovert path if you're not on the extrovert path, and that's fine. Another thing you can do if you're an introvert is to stop overloading your schedule. You need to start paying better attention to your energy levels during the week and be iterating on how cramped you can make your schedule before you really start feeling low energy. Your energy levels are something you need to be paying attention to and really just a small amount of attention while you're going through your calendar and maybe at the end of the day in some journaling, you can really see, okay, where am I at? Just even a simple you know, rating at the start and the end of the day. I wear a Garmin watch. I really like the Garmin's body battery. Now this is not a social body battery, but at the same time, I can tell how drained I am throughout the day. So I know, okay, I shouldn't be putting this many appointments back to back routinely because it'll be a big drain on me, my social energies, as well as just overall energy levels. And this again, is something you need to go figure out for yourself. I don't have an answer. It's like, well, if you schedule 13.2 hours of meetings per week, you're going to be fine. That's, I don't have that. That's not gonna happen. You have to go figure this out and iterate on this yourself. The final thing I'll add here is you need to find what rejuvenates your social energy and go do more of that. So say you're an introvert and you wanna go bouldering more because you find that's a reasonable amount of socializing, but it's not like going to some bar or club where there's you know proximity and you have to talk to everyone. If you like that, then why don't you just go do more of that? Such a novel idea, but it's something where you need to be paying attention to these things. 
So if you're having challenges with your social energy levels, start paying more attention and start iterating. Okay, that didn't work, let's try this. And you keep doing that until you find a system that works for you and is sustainable over the long term. This also gets into work life because if you're an introvert, you really hope the people on your team, especially if they're extroverts, see that you're an introvert and try to include you when it comes to business communications and meetings because introverts sometimes won't speak up for themselves. You know, in an engineering field, you do see this from time to time where people, even people with large egos can be very introverted. So there's a situation where maybe the engineer won't speak up for themselves. So sometimes someone from outside hopefully is watching them so that they can tell, oh, this person wants to talk, but for whatever reason, they won't allow themselves to talk or they're so introverted, they cannot get out of their own way to speak up, even if they have deep expertise on the topic. This gets into all sorts of other challenges at work and managing those social energy levels kind of extends from just your social energy levels and starts to watch energy levels of those around you. So if you see people getting very tired or seemingly very weary from socializing, you don't have to directly call that person out. You could maybe call them a day or two later and say, hey, yesterday was fun, but you seem really tired at the end or something to that sort to where you're, you're showing that you're paying attention to them because that will make that person feel very seen. And if you can come up with a novel way to help them, I'm sure they would appreciate that. I'm sure you got quite a bit out of those couple tips that I shared. If you want more social intelligence, I have a social intelligence playlist right over here. Or if you're ready to get into IQ topics, you can check out that playlist up here. Or keep doing what you're doing and getting the results you've been getting. Totally up to you.